CataractCoach.com. Capsule Rexus considerations. Here are my pearls for a perfect Capsule Rexus. Now, it depends on the case, what the definition of a perfect Capsule Rexus is. So here's a routine case. We're starting off making our incision here temporally using a diamond care tome that's pretty narrow, only about one and a half millimeters. So slightly enlarging that incision. And we're going to create our Capsule Rexus here. Now, this patient is a little bit unusual. This patient has very large pupils. So this patient, even in an average room, has about a 4 millimeter pupil. And this patient has about a 6 millimeter pupil in a dimly lit room. And that's pretty big for a cataract patient because you have to keep in mind what's the size of our optic, about 6 millimeters. So I want to create a caps rexus here that's just about 5.5 millimeters. I don't want a small rexus, a 4.5 rexus, because that's going to end up blocking part of the optic. So I created here, notice how I pivot in the incision. That's very important here. Measured at the end. That's why I held the forceps there. And here comes the end of the case. We'll inflate the bag with our viscoelastic and we'll put the lens in. You can see it's a pretty good looking rexus. And so I'm using the marks on my forcep. You don't have to use my forceps. Now, if you're going to ask which forceps I'm using, don't ask me. Go to cataractcoach.com, click on the About section. You can see all about me, including all my instruments that I use. Don't post a comment here. Now, the lens in the bag, just doing a little polishing here of the capsule, the undersurface of that capsule rim, polishing it with the chopper to get off those lens epithelial cells. And you can see, again, nicely centered rexus, beautifully round, and about five and a half, just like I wanted. So again, going to the other side, same thing here, just a little capsule polishing. I use the side of my chopper, and I can certainly achieve a very nice, clean, beautiful capsule bag. You also look at the center. That's an EDOF lens, extended up the focus with that central focusing element there on the optic. Going behind the lens, remove viscoelastic. So in a case like this, I want to measure out the rectus, and the marks on my forcep are 2.5 and, and 5 millimeters on the tip. So I want to create this 5.5 rectus, just slightly bigger than those marks on my forcep. And I want to keep it centered. One of my tricks for centration is lining up those Purkinje images. And again, with this EDOF lens, you also want those Purkinje images lined up. You see the first and fourth Purkinje images there. We need to get those lined up and make sure they're right in that central focusing optic here of that lens. And so that the, the one in the top is this, the smaller one is the first Purkinje image. And this reflection, the larger one is the fourth. You see a little bit of the other Purkinje images as well there. And again, that lens is very nicely lined up. There it is. And then the optic there is very nicely centered. That's going to be ideal for this patient. And the patient's very happy. Now, let's look at another case. This is another case. It's actually the case that I showed you yesterday. But we're going to go show you here in regular speed and normal speed here. And I'm going to show you putting in viscoelastic to slowly inflate the eye, get out the tripod. And now look at the capsule. I'm judging how elastic it, how, how pressurized is that capsule bag? And luckily in this case, not all that pressurized. And so it's not so pressurized, that's going to make life easy. I don't have to use techniques to deal with that intumescent cataract because there's really not a whole lot of lens milk or, or liquefied lens cortex in this case. So here we'll make our incision as well. And in this case, I want to have a sufficiently large rexus because I don't want a baby rexus. This nucleus is dense. So I want to be able to access it. I want a five millimeter rexus here. A little bit more overlap, I think, would be helpful. It gives you a little bit better margin there. Think about this. If you have a five millimeter capsule rex compared to six millimeter optic, it's a little bit easier to get that 360 overlap. If you're using a 575 rexus and a six millimeter optic, boy, you got to get it lined up just about perfect in order to get that overlap. So there's a little bit more margin here if we create a five millimeter rexus. Now you can look at my forceps. Those are the marks from at two and a half and five millimeters measured from the tip. And I go around, I create this rexus, notice the pivoting motion. And I get that rexus the same exact size I want it. Now at the end here, you can measure, boom, five millimeter rexus. And I'll show you the end of the case here. For this case, you can see it's a little bit smaller rex compared to the first case. It's about five millimeters in diameter. And look at the overlap, really nice overlap for 360. Going to have a nice result. So practice, 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 and you can do a beautiful rexus.